Today I'm going to show you how to create four different patchwork patterns and then we'll turn them into stockings ample enough to fill with the most delightful of holiday treasures. This is the rail fence pattern. It's simplistic in design, but it can be embellished in a number of creative ways. Now when a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. A simple four patch on point is just quick afternoon work. And best of all, you need to choose only a few colors. This easy pieced lattice design is just another way to use up your strips. And the traditional postage stamp has lace around the top of the stocking for a final flourish. Now these same patchwork designs can be turned into a cradle cover, adding warmth to a treasure dolly or just hung for a festive decorative touch. Well, join me for some easy how-to instructions and you'll soon have your stockings hanging by the chimney with care. The rail fence stocking is the easiest stocking that you can make. It's so easy that your children will probably want to make some with you. We'll let them select the fabric for the widest rail. This is just a great snowman piece. They'll probably really enjoy this one. Now this wide rail is cut at three and a half inches. And then from this one, select two other fabrics, the red, goes with this one, great at one and a half inches, and then the gold, another one and a half inch strip. You need to have two strips of each one of those colors. Just put them right sides together, sew that quarter inch seam, and now when you're ready to press, just press right down through that wide rail and press it so that the seams go over each one of the smaller rails. And then take that left end, ooh, shouldn't take you but minutes, take that left end and just square off the salvage edge. Get rid of that. Now once you have it sewn and pressed, measure it because we need to cut a square. That's the most important part. So take your ruler and line it up from edge to edge and it should be approximately five and a half inches. And now once you know whatever your width is, take your ruler, turn it and cut it so that you have a total of 10 rail fence blocks. Just move it along there, lift it up, cut it until you've got them all done. And then take those 10 blocks and start laying them out in the stocking shape. It actually goes two across and four down. And as you place them, look first at one rail going horizontal. Beside it, the same rail going vertical. And then the next block is actually the alternate of the one above, rail up and down, one beside it, rail going across, so that you just create that zigzag effect. Looks great. Now, to get that toe right in there, take two remaining blocks and continue that pattern. Okay, so we've got the red going along there. The block right here is going to continue that zigzag. So once you have all 10 blocks laid out, then you just sew vertical rows. Just flip this row right to it and go from top to bottom down and then add just the two blocks for the toe and then go across until it's one unit. So that whenever you put your pattern on top, oh, you'll see how great it fits. Actually has a little room at the top, little room at the bottom, so that you can just cut it right out of that patchwork. Well, this one is an easy rail fence to do. Now, I wanna show you one that Judy created because it's a lot of fun. A teddy bear print, and you can see the figures going throughout it. Well, actually, the way you turn the blocks up and down, you need to do a little special cutting with this particular one. So, let me take this teddy bear piece of fabric. It is, it is a print, it's got the faces going up and down. So you can put the rail fence block together. You need to take and cut one strip going from salvage or along with the salvage right down along here and then the second strip go across the salvage so that you actually have two strips that look like this. One like this and then the next one is like this. Now, Judy did something a little bit different with her stocking. Always have to do a little bit of inventiveness. She took and she put 
the same collar on one side here and then on this strip she put the same color as well so that she didn't actually get that alternating look that zigzag look throughout there and then to finish off this stocking she literally just did a fusible technique with the teddy bear just fused them right up at the top on the cuff oh it's great fun to embellish your cuffs that one was fun let me show you another one time to get back to the next stocking and it's a star studded four point patch on point and it's easy to do with these two inch strips you need to have two lights and two mediums of each one of them put them right sides together so a quarter inch seam allowance and then press that seam towards the medium then all you need to do is just take those two sets of strips and flip them right sides together oh, and just use your fingers to lock those stitches in place and then take your rotary cutter your ruler go ahead and just line that line up ruler right on the line Take that left edge, square it off, get rid of it, and then with your ruler, line it up at two inch grid marks. And just lift up your ruler, tip it, move it along, cutting your four patch until you have a total of 22 four patch. Oh, that's pretty good, won't take you long. And the seam is actually set up so that as you start stitching, use that quarter inch seam allowance, but the top seam is pushed up, the bottom seam is pushed down. So use your stiletto and hold that straight as you go uh, right across those seams. But the way it's set up, the top seam just pushes itself right into the bottom seam, locks it together. Just before Christmas, you should have perfect four patch. Okay, just assembly line sew all 22 of your four patch, and then when you drop it on your pressing mat, line up the stitches so that they're at the bottom. And then you just go ahead and fold that down across there. Get that nice and straight. Ooh, these are perfect four patch. Really like it. Okay, and then once you have it all pressed, you need to have six one and a half inch strips. That's for your lattice right here, the six one and a half inch strips. And make sure you line it up so that the dark is right here, the seam is going down like that. And you're actually going to sew this onto the side of all 22 four patch. Line that up along there. Take this piece match the opposite end, stretch it to meet, hold it along there, and just make sure that you butt every single one in that same order, right across there, butt on the next one till they're all done. And then once you have that one and a half inch lattice strip added to each one of them, let me just pull this out of the way, then just lay your piece on the grid, take your ruler, square it up, cut right straight across. Oh, let me see one more right in there. Pull out that pin and cut in between each one of those blocks so that you actually have a piece that looks like this along there. One more time, more pressing, gosh, back and forth to the iron. Drop it on your mat, set that seam, and then just lift it up so that the seam on the lattice is actually behind the four patch like so. Okay, now we're cooking with this great poinsettia fabric. Now, do some pairing up and sew these pieces together in pairs so that you actually have enough when you are done so that you have six long pieces in a row, two sets of six, and this is actually two pairs here and on the end of it I'm just going to add one more piece so that in this strip there's five four patch with the lattice in between and then do a second set five four patch and then the lattice are in between each one of them and that actually takes care of all 22 of those four patch so let me show you how you're going to lay out these long strips for your stocking shape okay right up here i have the six four patch in a row and in between I put the one and a half inch lattice and actually you sew lattice on either side when you push that close together it helps if you put marks straight across so that these can be pinned together now this set right here with the five four patch is going to go right up here 
in this section like this. You'll add a lattice to that. And then on the second side, the other piece that has the four patch, the five four patch in a row, you lay it out like so. And then when you cut it, you're actually going to take your stocking pattern and place it on point so that as you cut around there, lift your pattern away, then it's going to look like this. Oh, and this is a great one. Candy canes, little kitty cats looking out. Well, this one was a fun one to do. Let me show you another one. Just by changing your fabric, you can create an entirely different look in your stocking. Now, Stephanie took an icy blue fabric with some yellow stars, and ooh, it's wonderful. Right here in the center is a three and a half inch square, and then on the four sides are three strips, two alike and one different. And then right here are white cornerstones to finish it off. Now for a country look, this quilt maker has a great touch of blue that she added to her red and green. She pulled that blue right out of that little snowman and that star and then finished it off with a checked cuff. Perfect looking in the family room. Now this one is really fun. This one is very country as well, using the plaids right here. Two plaids, the green checked, in the strips and then the light cornerstones here. But actually when the quilt is finished, when the stocking is finished, the blocks are set on point. So our moose are just walking right across the tundra. Fun anyways. Now this, this stocking is very similar to the last one that we did. Just a little different technique. One and a half inch strips again. Take three of them and sew them together. Two alike, one different. And then once you're finished, go ahead and press the seams to one side and cut them into one and a half inch segments. Now go ahead and measure these three segments. They should be approximately three and a half inches. And once again, cut strips into squares the same size. You should cut 22 squares, approximately three and a half inches. And then all you need to do is just take this piece, flip it right sides together to it, and assembly line sew this one piece on all 22. Now, it's just like the last one. You sew them into pairs, and then you sew them into two groups of six and two groups of five. Now, you need to also put lattice in between these sets. To do the lattice, just take the same three again, the two alike and one different, and add your cornerstone piece to one side. Cut your strip in half so that you can actually sew two sets together. And you basically are going to be cutting these into one and a half inch segments and piecing them together into long strips so that they fit right into here. And you can see this is a one with five, set together with the lattice in between, the cornerstones lined up, the two groups of six, and then the one group of five again. So when you put your pattern on the top, then you go ahead and cut that on point as well. Now, this three and a half inch square gives you a great opportunity for some embellishment. You don't need to use Christmas fabric to make your quilts. These two are made out of the 30s reproduction fabrics and you can leave them out year round. Now this is the same pattern that I just showed you and Patty finished it off with buttons in each one of the cornerstones and then up in the cuff she embellished it with a yo-yo and two embroidered leaves. Perfect touch for the 30s look. Now this one is made out of the same fabric and then the cuff is actually an old dresser scarf embroidered in those same colors that are in the fabric. Now this has the old shrunk up, wrinkled old quilt look simply because after Patty made the patchwork, she quilted it on 100% cotton fleece and then laundered it twice before she went on. Well, the postage stamp pattern is really quite easy to do. You need to have six different one and a half inch strips. Just go ahead and take them and sew them together lengthwise using the pastels 30s if you like. And then once you have the six sewn together, cut it in half and sew the second half to the opposite side so that there's literally 12 in a row. Make two sets exactly the same and then press your seams in opposite directions. In this one, from the purple, the seams are all pressed down. 
in this one, from the purple, the seams are all pressed towards it. Then you can just go ahead, layer those pieces up, and cut them into one and a half inch sections. Line them up like this, just cut straight across there, lift your ruler, cut into one and a half inch. You need to have from each set 14 one and a half inch pieces. And now once you have them cut, you actually need to make them longer. So take from the same stack and piece them together so that they're now 24 in each row. So we're going to start and just work with these long 24 piece strips. Start with one. Now this one, the seam is going up. So this will be our center point. So from the second stack with the seam, going down. Put it right next to it, but drop it down one step. And then just keep on alternating between the two stacks, each time dropping it down one step so that whenever you sew these pieces together, then the seams are actually going to lock into place. Now from the center, go out five strips. And let's see, this is going to make that fifth strip right there. You can see the steps going down. And then from the opposite side, it's exactly the same. Five steps going down. So now, just take the center piece with the first strip. Just line that up. Line up that first seam right sides together and you'll see how easy it is. Go ahead and use your stiletto if you want. Feel that seam, lock it together, whatever you need to do, but just continuously assembly line sew. Now you're going to take four of those and set it aside. Let me show you. Ah, perfect match without any pins. That's the best part. Now take four of those pieces and actually set those aside and sew them together one step down for the toe. So once you have this whole piece done, here's the center, five down, five the other way. Here's the piece with four. And once you get those all sewn, that slips right into place. And this part right here is the part that you use to cut out your toe. When you put your stocking pattern on top, you've got a little extra at the top, a little extra at the bottom. You can just go ahead and then get into some machine quilting and lining. I cut all of the pieces for my stocking in one stack, and boy, it's fast and easy to do. This is how. Just go ahead and take once your top is sewn together, then layer it with 100% cotton batting and do some machine quilting. I just went through all of the rails on the rail fence and then I layered it with the backing for the stocking. Actually, it's wrong side up and behind that are two pieces for the lining. Put the pattern on top, just cut around the outside edge and that is it cut around that stocking just once. So let me get rid of the pattern and I'll just do some restacking and show you how to put the whole quilt together. Now take the, the backing and put it right sides together to the patchwork and just go ahead and leave those two lining pieces right behind it. And then once you have them all lined up, put some pins right through all of the thicknesses just to hold it together. Oh, one down here on the toe. We are going to be done with this in just a twinkling. Okay, now it's fairly thick. You might want to just use a longer stitch, oh, like 15, like um, 10 stitches to the inch. Line that up right along the edge and just sew the whole way around the outside edge. Leave that top open. Well, the whole way around the outside edge. Now all you need to do is just go ahead and clip that. If you need to straighten the top on it, go ahead and do that. But now comes the miracle lining because all you do is just take your hand, separate the two pieces of lining right here, put your hand clear down to the toe, just grab hold of the toe and just turn it right side out. And actually, let me get that turned again. I actually got hold of the wrong piece. Okay, pull it right side out. Get that toe all punched out again. It's looking great. And so whenever you separate it, then right here, the two linings are inside, completely finished seam along the outside. Okay, now the cuff 
is actually cut one half inch larger than the finished size. So let's just go ahead. This is an eight inch strip. Just go ahead and take this cuff and fold it. Lay it right against there and be sure and include your seam allowance. I'm just going to go ahead and line that up there. Cut that strip off. I've got just a little bit for the seam allowance. Cut that off and right along this edge, just seam it together. Now, the finishing touch is easy to do. You make a circle out of your cuff and turn it so that it's wrong sides together. Tuck that inside in between the two lining pieces and stitch around the outside edge. And then once you have that stitched right around here, it's going to got the raw edge there. You just pull that out and close your ribbon or whatever at the same time. And then from the inside, it's completely finished and nice finished seam right there. Well, I have a whole sleigh full of, of stockings I want to just finish in a twinkling. The presentation of handmade gifts and quilts brings the magic to Christmas. May you too piece together and give a gift of love this holiday season. Oh.